All right, so Twitch has finally cracked down on the Just Waiting Room streams. They're going to be taking those down. They sent out this post yesterday, and uh, we're going to be talking about it, man. It's kind of it's kind of big. Moving forward, waiting rooms won't be allowed on Twitch under our policies, reportable under impersonation. A waiting room is defined as a stream that only features another channel's content and includes no reaction or other original content. So, uh, I think everyone kind of seen this comp- uh, coming. There was several of these going and over uh, and just absolutely flooding certain sections like Rainbow Six Siege. Uh, I already went and checked the uh, Siege website and all of those are down. I don't know if Twitch already took them down or if those guys or gals seen this coming and was like, okay, I'm going to I'm gonna go offline before they uh, take action against my channel. Not sure which one that was, but they are gone now. And used to with uh, the uh, C section, you would maybe see these two people and then it would be like a dozen jinxy waiting rooms. <laughs> like it buried the smaller streamers even further. Like you... It was just nothing but it, jinxy wedding rooms. And some of these were getting like five, 600 viewers, if not more. And that's not including like the just chatting section, like for Queso, uh, X, Kai, the, the amount of, and some of these were getting up to a couple thousand viewers too, which was insane. But one of the big reasons I see for this is it costs money for Twitch to host a stream. And these channels are going 24-7. Like, even when the actual streamer goes live, they won't raid or host or anything like that. They just, well, I, I can't say I can't say that for all of them. Most of what I've seen would stay live. So this is just a 24-7 VOD channel. Never ending. So you imagine that uh, they're costing Twitch a lot of money. And it makes it even worse in the fact, like, these channels, uh, most of these are not going to get affiliated because once they, if they were to do that and make money off someone else's likeness, uh, obviously uh, the actual streamer is going to uh, pursue action against them, or or people are going to report them and they're going to end up getting banned anyways. So most of these people didn't get affiliated, which means they're not getting any revenue. No, 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 like uh, Twitch subs, uh, bids, anything like that. I think. Um, I think they can still run ads, right? Can they still can Twitch run ads across a non-affiliated affiliated stream to make money on their end, but not for the streamer? I don't know. I don't know exactly how that works, but I would imagine the revenue, if they were able to do that, I would imagine that the revenue was very minimal. <laughs> so yeah, I mean that would have been very costly for Twitch to uh, keep these streams up and running. And I know in some situations, depending on the size of the stream, it can cost like tens of thousands of dollars for a, uh, an eight-hour stream, which is insane. Yeah, it costs it costs Twitch a lot of money to do that. And um, as far as, like, I didn't think it was like too huge of a problem at first until I thought of that. I was like, yeah, Twitch, Twitch is losing too much money. They're taking that down. That's over. Done. Um, <clears throat> what uh, what else could be a problem here for the waiting rooms? I mean, outside of th- if they get affiliated and they started making money off likeness, uh, there there they wasn't too big of an issue had it not been for the money side of things, the the monetary side of things. Um, I guess it could be like if you go to the Rainbow Six Siege section where it was like flooded with a uh, jinxy and uh, stomping. I guess it did push like some of the uh, medium to small streamers even further down, hurting the uh, discoverability of those streamers. I could see that being a problem as well. I'm glad they did away with it. I am. I am. I'm glad they did away with it. It'll be interesting to see, because uh, I was reading some of the comments under their post and like some were doing like a game update waiting rooms. I guess this falls under the same thing. Um, let's see. I bet this was for Jinxie. They were all over Rainbow Six Siege. Uh, how does this affect 24-7 channels run by the content owner? <clears throat> I 
or 24-7. You know, this person's actually asking some good questions. It'll be interesting to see how they handle that. Because there, there are a lot of channels that are like, uh, the streamer won't be there. They'll just leave the stream running for drops. Like, especially in Rust. You know, that happens a lot, which I'm grateful for because I can turn that on and go to bed and not have to worry about the streamer going offline and then I'm not getting my drops anymore. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, there is downsides, people. There are downsides. <laughs> yeah, um, and, and as far as, like, the streamer running their own 24 I would imagine that's also costing Twitch a lot of money with not a lot of uh, uh, monetary return. They may have to crack down on that as well. Um, I don't see a, a, a very big problem for it with anyone else as far as, you know, if that streamer makes their own channel to run their VODs 24-7. The only downside I can think of that is the monetary issue with Twitch. And, of course, people are going to be upset now that they lost their 24-7 hour channels. And then uh, uh, the big streamer, Andy, keeps uh, keeps his. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it had to be costing Twitch a lot of money, though, man. Had to be costing Twitch a lot of money. Uh, I'd say some of the streamers probably got upset as well. Uh, maybe uh, keeping some of the viewership over there instead of actually on their main channel. Uh, I, like I said, I don't think that is as big of a deal because when those guys go live, they're getting tens of thousands of viewers. Uh, <laughs> I'm sure four or five hundred is not going to be as noticeable to them. Uh, and of course, uh, it, it buries the smaller streamers either, even further into the search list. Uh, I, I can understand that as well. Uh, heard the, it just hurts those guys' uh, discoverability. But yeah, I mean, that, that's interesting, man. I, I'm surprised they actually it took them a while because I feel like the waiting room channels had been around for a minute, absolute minute. Are there any more good tro uh, any more good comments? This sort of reads as both uh, reads both as nobody's allowed to host waiting rooms, as well as only authorized individuals are not allowed to host waiting rooms. <laughs> okay, people are already trying to look for ways around it so that they can run twenty four seven channels. I'm sure people are going to find something that'll stick, and they'll use it for a while until Twitch actually addresses it. Um, yeah, it'll be interesting to see. We'll we'll see what uh, the people come up with. But yeah, I, I'm glad that Twitch uh, Twitch finally did away with the waiting rooms. I, I kind of figured that was hurting the smaller channels. And it's just costing Twitch a lot of money. Costing Twitch a lot of money. And some of those guys would actually try to get uh, try to get affiliated so that they could make money. And uh, at, non-surprisingly, this was right around the corner. All right, guys, this is Cheap Shot. I'm out. Y'all have an amazing day. Catch you in the next one.